Does the mystology chapter of your thesis make you anxious? Are you concerned that your research methods may not sound convincing? If this is the case, then you have come to the right place. This video is for you. Hi, Dong Ling here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'll show you nine clear strategies to justify your research methods, so your work stands out and earns the confidence of your supervisors and examiners. This video is just about basic strategies. Suppose you need more advanced guidance, such as how to justify your research methods of cross-cultural research. You may be interested in my doctoral thesis on multi-channel shopping behavior, a comparison between Chinese and French consumers in the cosmetic markets. Please check the description for instant downloads. You could replicate this approach in your study or adopt it to a different context. Also, do you want a free checklist or template to follow along? Check the description for instant downloads. Before we dive into these strategies, let's briefly discuss why justifying your methods is so crucial. Because justifying your methods is about more than checking a box, it's your chance to prove your research is solid, trustworthy, and meaningful. A well-justified methodology can have the following advantages. First, it builds credibility. Strong methods make your results believable. Second, it demonstrates your understanding, proving that you are not just following a recipe, a recipe but making informed choices. Next, it ensures replicability. Detailed justifications help others repeat or build on your work. After that, it affects your grade. Examiners want to see a clear, logical defense of your research design. All right, let's get started with the first strategy, that is to align methods with research aims and questions. Start by restating your primary research questions and objectives. Then, for every method you choose, explain how it directly addresses those research questions and objectives. For example, to explore the lived experiences of X, qualitative interviews were chosen for their depth and detail. On the other hand, to measure the impact of Y, a quantitative survey was used to generalize findings. Always make the link between your question and your chosen method explicit. Now that we've covered the basics of aligning your methods with your goals, let's move on to the second strategy, which focuses on the philosophical aspects. State your research paradigm. Next up, your research paradigm. This paradigm is the lens or worldview that shapes your entire research approach. Common paradigms include the following three. First, positivism. Often the body of quantitative, objective, hypothesis testing research thinking a single choice. The next is about interpretivism, the philosophical engine for qualitative research, focusing on understanding meaning and social contexts, exploring multiple realities. After that, the third is pragmatism, which is like a versatile multi-tool all about using whatever methods work best to answer the research question, often leading to mixed methods. Here is an example. 
this study uses an interpretive paradigm to capture subjective experiences, justifying the use of qualitative methods. Also, consider your law as a research and how it may impact your work. Once you've set the right foundation, it's time to get specific about what you did. That is about the third strategy we discussed about. Now, let's talk details. What you did and how you did it. This detail is your chance to be extremely clear so that someone else can replicate your study. First, in terms of data collection, what tools, surveys, interviews, experiments did you use? How were well they designed and administered? Who were your participants? And then, in terms of data analysis, be specific. Did you use thematic analysis, content analysis, t-tests, regression, and so on and so forth? Mention any software you used. Aim for enough detail to create a clear audit trail. But don't stop at just describing the steps. This next part is where you really make your case. This discussion leads to our first strategy, explain why you choose each method. For every method or tool, explain why it was the best fit for your research. For example, why is this survey instrument? Why semi-structured interviews? Why this kind of statistical test? Always connect your choices back to your research question and aims. Of course, it's not just about your reasoning. Backing it up with evidence is key. This discussion leads to our fifth strategy, reference existing literature and best practices. Support your choices by citing respected methodology tests or similar studies in your field. Here's an example. This approach follows Smith 2020 and Jones 2021, who also used semi-structured interviews to explore similar topics. If your method is novel, explain why existing methods won't work and what gap your approach fills. Do you want a free checklist or template to follow along? Check the description for instant downloads. Now, showing your node field is excellent, but examiners also want to see that you've weighed your options. This discussion leads to the sixth strategy we discussed about, address alternatives. Show critical thinking by briefly mentioning other methods you considered and why you didn't choose them. For example, why surveys could have gathered broader data, interviews provided rich insights needed for this study. This consideration reassures you later that your choice was deliberate and well sorted out. Let's keep going. Rigor is another critical factor that examiners look for. This discussion leads to our seven strategies mentioned above. Ensure rigor, validity, reliability, and mitigating bias. Your methodology also needs to clearly articulate how you ensured the quality and the trustworthiness of your research. This measure involves discussing concepts such as validity and reliability for quantitative studies, or trustworthiness criteria including credibility, transferability, dependability, and confirmability for qualitative studies. Think of this as the quality control section of your research factory. Explain the specific steps you implemented, 
for quantitative research. This may involve using validated instruments like uh, established questionnaires that are known to work, pilot test your survey or experiment, for example, a dress rehearsal to identify and resolve any issues. It may also involve using appropriate sampling techniques to ensure you can confidently generalize your findings. Also, you need to detail the statistical procedures you used to demonstrate significance for qualitative research. You may discuss practices like triangulation, member checking, peer debriefing, and the detailed audit trail. For example, for triangulation, using multiple data sources, methods, or even researches to confirm your findings, like detectives cooperating witness statements. And then, for member checking, ask participants to review your interpretations and see if they can resonate with their own experiences. After that, for peer debriefing, discuss your findings with colleagues to gain different perspectives and uncover blind spots. And finally, for a detailed audit trail, maintaining meticulous records of your entire research process, leaving a clear trail of your work. It's also critically important to discuss uh, how you minimize the potential bias. This measure could involve your sampling strategy, like a random sampling to reduce selection bias. Using blending in experiments where participants or researchers don't know who got what treatment, or practicing reflexivity in qualitative research, which means acknowledging your own potential biases and how you actively manage them like a judge accepting a potential conflict of interest. Finally, don't shy away from acknowledging the limitations of your chosen methods. No method is perfect, and pretending yours is well raised eyebrows. Proactively addressing limitations actually demonstrates that you have a realistic and a critical perspective on your research design. Explain why these limitations don't entirely undermine your findings and perhaps even suggest how future research could address them. Admitting a limitation is like saying, my amazing superhero can't fly, but here's how they still save the day. It adds to your credibility. And don't forget, excuses aren't just a formality, they are essential, which is about our S strategy, cover ethical considerations. To address it correctly, be sure to outline how you protected your participants, such as informed consent, confidentiality and anonymity, data security, right to withdraw, approval from ESCO's committees. The key is to be transparent. ESCO's strengthen the credibility of your research. Okay, we are almost there. Now, let's discuss how to present this information clearly and persuasively, which is about our last strategy, the ninth strategy. Write clearly for your audience. Use clear, jargon-free language unless technical terms are needed, and explain them if so. Adjust the level of detail based on how standard or novel your methods are. Most importantly, always explain why, not just what and how. OK, let's quickly recap those key strategies. 1. Align your methods with your aims and questions. 2. Set your research paradigm. 3. Detail the what and the how. 
Four, explain why for each choice. Five, reference best practices and literature. Six, acknowledge alternatives. Seven, demonstrate the rigor and minimize the bias. Eight, cover ethics. Nine, write clearly for your audience. Just a few quick traps to keep in mind for the following five common pitfalls to avoid. First, avoid being vague. Provide sufficient detail. Next, don't mismatch methods with questions. And then, don't just list methods. Always justify. After that, don't ignore limitations. And finally, don't focus too much on minor details, but don't skip crucial ones. Now that we've covered all these strategies and the common pitfalls to avoid, let's conclude this video with this final tip: justifying your methods can be challenging, but it's also an opportunity to showcase your critical thinking. Use these strategies. You'll find a strong and defensible case for your research and stand out for all the right reasons. Remember, helpful bonus resources and downloads are waiting for you in the description, so be sure to check them out. If this video was helpful, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and share your big STEM mythology challenges in the comments. If you still need someone to review your paper before submitting it, especially the methodology session, feel free to send it to me via email or through our website. For more details, see the description section below. Let's support each other and make those methodology sessions even better. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care.